Let us pray. Our loving heavenly parent God, let my words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in thy sight always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, I greet you all in the matchless name of our loving Lord Jesus Christ. I praise God for this wonderful opportunity to be with you and worship with you and sharing the word of God with you in the Holy Week of the, today. And I also want to thank the Presbyter Reverend Manava Sandosham and all the office bearers of the church and all the members for giving me this opportunity. In the church calendar, the Holy Week is an important part. In this uh, week, we meditate normally upon the last days of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's ministry in this world as a human being. Last Sunday, we celebrated the Palm Sunday. Following that, Jesus entered into the church. Of course, in the last few days of Jesus Christ's ministry as a human being in this world, his unusual things happened. It's not a normal way of Jesus' ministry. First, Jesus never wants to be, be prominent and he never wants any fame or he never wants to celebrate himself or he need any honor from anybody else. From his birth to his death on the cross, he is always humble. He born in a poor family, even though they are the uh, native of Bethlehem, their parents have no place to stay. Sometimes, we are, most of us are come from our many places, but at least in our native place, our relatives are there. Somebody has to stay. But for Mary and Joseph, nobody is there. And even they are not able to get a place to stay, even at the stage of the delivery. The Mary has expecting a delivery, she has to deliver a baby. But in that critical situation also, she doesn't have any place but by mercy of the people, thus, uh, he is able to provide some place. And uh, Jesus is, uh, in the coming Thursday, we are going to celebrate the Monday Thursday. There also he shows he is ready to wash the feet of his disciples. As a rabbi, as a, as a guru, he never expected any honor from his disciples even. But on the Sunday, the Palm Sunday, he entered as, that we call as a triumphal entry of Jerusalem. Why it happens is quite different. Because he wants to prove himself and he wants to still finally, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. In our country also, when we look back the history of our country, for particularly we may take Tamil Nadu, so many kings are ruled. We know Sarasoda Pandya and Pallava. And at the one time, the Islamic uh, kingdom was there. And then the British rule comes, and then the Congress, and then BJP. Some, these rules are coming and going, and uh, 
some of operations, that's all that. But finally, what God wants us to tell, He is the King of Kings. One day He will come and reign the whole world. We must prepare for the Kingdom of God. So He want to take, uh, you want to uh, emphasize that He entered in the Jerusalem. He attract the people of this Jerusalem. In Jesus' ministry, he lived in this world as a human being for 33 and a half day, uh, years. 30 years, his ministry is with his family, and he learned so much. The last three and a half years, he, come, he came for a public ministry. Even that, Three years he spent his ministry in Galilee. The people were lived there, the more poor, poorest of the poor people and the oppressed. One day, six months he, about six months, he ministered in the great city of Jerusalem. These people never accepted him. Even the scribes, the priests, high priests, always saw Jesus as a threat to them. But in spite of that, Jesus wants to prove himself he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So, this is an unusual incident in the Jesus' life. And second one is, Jesus cursed the fig tree. That is unusual. Jesus never cursed anybody else. Jesus always blessed. And uh, because he was so much angry, because the people turned the church, the temple, as a den of thieves. Make money through that uh, temple. Temple is always is a house of prayer. Today we will meditate on the theme, Jesus cleansed the temple. This is an incident recorded in all four Gospels. Um, all the four gospel writers mention this. It shows the importance of the action of Jesus. But there is a difference between the synaptic gospels, that is Matthew, Mark and Luke. And uh, Jesus, uh, in John's gospel, it recorded in a different way. You may take uh, John 2nd chapter, verses 13 to 17. There, John, John 2nd chapter, verses 13 to 17. There, John still says, he started his ministry by cleansing the temple. It is the, John tells, the beginning of his ministry, he cleansed the temple. But other Gospel writers, Mark, Matthew, Luke, says it is the end of his ministry. Whether it is a two incident or the same incident. But many of the theologians and the church history people say it is a two incident. Somebody can read the... Uh, Words, John's second chapter, 16th word. Anybody can read? John, second chapter, 16th word. House of? Trade. Uh, in the beginning of the 
ministry, the temple was house of merchants or traders. After three years, he again came to the temple. Now, the house of merchants become what? House of thieves. Whether the church grows in the holiness or going worst by worst. My dear sisters and brothers, let us look over ourselves. Both the political people and the so-called religious leaders together exploited the poor. There is oppression. What is the condition of today? If Jesus come today in our church, what he can say? It, whether he can say, this is the house of prayer. All people may can. This is my father's house. Or we make it as a house of merchants or house of thieves. Jesus then took, he became anger. He driven out all the people, this, those people who exploited the poor. This is not the house for merchants, the trades. That means trade is not uh, is a uh, bad thing. That's not. But they make, they exploit it. For example, if a poor man or woman may want to offer a lamp or a hen or something to God. So, they can take uh, some goat or sheep or anything and they feed them much, make it very fat and good and they want to offer it to the Lord and bring it to the temple. But they cannot, they are not right, go straight and offer that. Before that, there is a person appointed by this priest. He check whether it is all pure or unpure, whether any, the, anything is wrong in that, uh, the leg is not correct, his hair is not correct. Yeah. Some defects they may found out and ask, no, no, you cannot offer this to the temple, so you go and get another. So they, there is a people there, they got the hen or goat, whatever that, they in, in change, they have to get money and also give the weakest one of these. These merchants have exploited the people. Likewise, some people have a collection, even uh, I hope you may also that the take like we like Wundi like that, we will daily have to put something and bring it to the church for the offering. But what the priest told is, no, 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 you cannot offer this coin in the church. Because the Roman emperor's symbol is there. So you have to change. Money changes are there. Likewise, when we go to another country, we have to change our money according to their currency. So the, P, the temple has released their, their own currency. They have to change. If, for example, if I bring 100 rupees to offer God, no, no, you cannot put this 100 because the Caesar's uh, symbol is there. You have to change it as the currency of the temple. There they can get 30 to 550 percent. Even though I want to offer God 100 rupees, I'm not able to offer it. Only 50 rupees. The 50 rupees goes to the status. This anointed, this, this uh, bring angry to the Jesus Christ. It shows us one of the firest manifestation of Jesus Christ. 
is anger directed against those who exploited them in the name of religion. Even today, we have to examine how many gas people, how many churches are exploiting. Whether our church is the church, is the house of prayer, house of our God, Father, and make it a political session, God reminds, I will come again as the King of King and Lord of Lord. So he gave the opportunity to repent us. It shows that his anger is specially directed against those who made it impossible for simple people to worship the Lord. You can read in Matthew 21, 14, 14th verse. Matthew 21, 14. I will read it for you. Uh, Matthew 21, uh, verses 14. Mm. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and healed them. These blind and lame are never allowed to enter into the temple. But Jesus made a great revolution. He he uh, asked the merchants and the people who exploited the poor to go out of the church. He uh, driven them from the church, from the temple. As soon as they left the church, they left the temple, this lame and blame came to the church. Usually in Jewish temple, Blind people and lame people are never allowed to enter the church. Why? When you go back to the history, in 2 Samuel 5th chapter, once David, the great king, conquered the Jerusalem. At that time, the natives are there. Jerusalem. When David entered into the Jerusalem. There, the people rejected him. No, we cannot allow him, David. Because this is my our land. How can he enter? Especially the lame and blind are against David. Then what, what David did? By the grace of God was something. He conquered the Jerusalem and made an order, hereafter, the lame and blind may not enter into the temple. Second Samuel 5th chapter, 8th word. And it taken see. But here, Jesus came. And he made a revolution to allow the people, the church is for them. Of course, we are good regard about King David, but there are many flaws in his life, at least regarding his relationship with Bathsheba and his relationship with the poor. But in later days, he repented because of God's grace. That's why he repented and God made him the king. And Jesus himself came in his Way, in his family. Dear friends, in conclusion, I want to remind this, what is our stand? How we, we use this church, this temple? How we help the people, those, are, those who are not able to speak for themselves. 
how we help the people those who are not able to stand on their own legs whether we are with the oppressed or oppressors in which side you are jesus is always with the poor and the oppressed he spoke for them he fight for them not only the church the not only the temple not only the high priest even the roman emperors have oppressed the people the both these oppressors they religion uh, politics everything is with the powerful people even today where is the place of the poor and the oppressed you may read in the newspapers for last two few days the kerala government and the tamil nadu government is celebrating the vaikyam revolution in kerala the vaikyam the supplies periyar lead a great protest but the the people are not only allowed to enter into a church not when they are they are prohibited to walk in the streets of the church uh, temple also so in is a 100th year yes sir and 1923 there's a great revolution and periya in the leadership of periya a media revolution and the people are then allowed to walk in the streets not only the 100 years back some 30 or 40 years back when i visited the nagalapuram one of the village as a director of the board of evangelism in our diocese i visited that place because some 100 people are prepared to take baptism we are going in a procession suddenly when we entered in a street from children to the elderly people they take off their shoes and I take them in the hands and walk i stop them and ask why what happened why you take your shoes in your hands why chapels in your hands i said it it's in 1991 1991 92 when i was in uh, Uh, presbyter in st paul's church at the same time i was a director for the board of evangelism i went to baptize those people in this area the elder said no no we cannot walk in the street wearing the shoes this is the street where the so called high high caste people are living i said you you put your shoes where you were shoes walk i will be there i will see what happened that people are with fear because i shouted like anything what people you are you cannot accept this kind of oppression they wear their shoes and walk to the streets by god's grace nothing happened but one wonderful thing happened what is there after after baptizing those people i have i am returning in a bike uh, the local pastor took me in the bike four bikes are followed me the pastor said no no these people are coming to threaten us or uh, beat us we will go fast i said no don't be hurry let us see what happens some 10 uh, young people come before us and they stopped us and they asked me father you came to that place why not you came to come to our place come, please come and pray for us also that is the thing i pray so we must take some bold steps because jesus is with us dear friends last uh, 17th of march there is a incident in parsavakam i am now 
looking after the missionary chapel in Mukata Street. Every Friday we have a prayer. Uh, the people, those who are working in the shops, come at 10 o'clock in the night, 10 p.m. The prayer will be go up to 10, 11, 11.30. Some 150 to 200 uh, workers are coming from various uh, uh, shops. Suddenly, some people came before the church, they said, you are converting these people. Don't put up the prayer. These threats are always there, but we cannot have that. Even police came, everything came, that's, but now it is calm. But the, they are threatening the people. They want the people to be under their control. But we, the people of God, we must think ourselves whether we are with the poor and the oppressed or we are oppressing the people. Whether we are ready to stand with the people, those who are oppressed. If we are the real disciples of Jesus Christ, our eyes must always be with the poor and the oppressed people. How can I help them? How can I speak for them? What can I do for them? Finally, in 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, 16th verse. 1 Corinthians, 3rd chapter, 16th word. Do you not know that you are God's temple and the God's spirit dwells in you? Finally, who are the temple? You and I are the temple. We must be always conscious about that. The Holy Spirit lives in us. When we were baptized, when we are confirmed, don't forget the Holy Spirit comes in you, you become the temple. And how we use that real temple that is our body to glorify God or we make ourselves, our bodies as a house of thieves, house of merchants or it is a real house of prayer, house of the parent God. Whether, how much connection we have with the Lord. Just to, I, I'm not asking to raise your hands or like that. Just you think and you examine yourselves. That is what the Lent. We are com coming close to the Lent season. How much time I am spending with the Lord? How much time I am spending to meditate on the God's word? How much I spend for my own business, my own work, my, my own everything. Usually in the Lent season we don't have the marriages or any functions in our family. Not because these Lent seasons are bad seasons, but at least we have to spend more time. It will begin in the Lent. Otherwise we make uh, the temple that is our body as a thief's delving place. Satan's delving place. If you don't have the relationship with God, you are just spoiling yourself, your soul, mind, body, everything. 